Hi and welcome to this introductory course for networking. My name is Ilya Gatsev and I will be your teacher today. A few words about myself. I consider myself as IT professional. Actually, I'm a professional teacher of mathematics, informatics and information technologies. It's a bachelor's degree. Currently, I'm holding also a master's degree in IT. Over the years, I passed over 320 courses and exams. I have been working in IT for more than 16 years. I've done web developing, I've done server administration, I've done enterprise IT support, and I was network engineer. I worked more than 6 years in the German IT industry and also I'm holding several Cisco professional levels, including Cisco Certified Network Associate, Routing and Switching, Cisco Security Solutions for System Engineers, Cisco Enterprise Networks, Core and BAN Exam, and Cisco Digital Training Specialist. Network Definition A network can be defined as two or more computers connected together in such a way that they can share resources. The purpose of a network actually is to share resources. Let's move on to the next slide. A resource may be a file, a folder, a printer, a disk drive. The video you are watching right now is also a resource, but actually anything else that exists on a computer is a resource. Network connections. Usually the connections between computers in a network are made using physical wires or cables. However, some connections are wireless using radio waves or infrared signals. Network classification. Depending on one's perspective, we can classify networks in different ways. Based on network size, they can be LAN, BAN or MAN. Based on topology, bus, star or RIM for example. Based on management method, peer-to-peer -peer or client-server. Based on transmission media, wired or wireless. In a minute, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Program. So let's move on to the next slide. Landman and Van. Network in a small geographic area, room building, or campus is called LAN, local area network. Network in a city is called MAN, metropolitan area network. And network spread geographically, country, or across the globe is called VAN, or wide area network. Network topology. A network topology describes the layout of the wire and the device as well as the type used by data transmission. A topology is a way of laying on network. Topologies can be either physical or logical. Physical topology describes how the cables are run, and logical topology describes how the network messages travel. The network topology defines the way in which computers, printers and other devices are connected. You can see on the display example of the ring topology. Here we have example of the star topology. In this corner you can see the mesh topology and the last one example is bus topology. Star topology, a configuration that centers around one node to which all others are connected and to which all messages are sent. And bus topology are nodes are connected to a single communication line that carries messages in both directions. Advantages and disadvantages. When I talk about the bus topology, it's cheap, easy to install, but it's difficult to reconfigure and break in bus disables entire network. When I'm talking about the start topology, it's cheap, easy to install, easy to reconfigure, and it's fault tolerant. But for sure, it's more expensive than a bus because we will have more connections. The ring topology is efficient, easy to install, and reconfiguration is difficult, and for sure, it's very expensive. And the last one example is the mesh topology. It's the simplest one, most fault tolerant, but the disadvantages are reconfiguration is extremely difficult. Extremely expensive and for sure it's very complex. You need to memorize that the most used 
5G nowadays is the start of 5G. This is all you need to know at this stage. Let's proceed to the next slide. Client and servers. I'll give you one very good example of client and servers. The video you are watching right now is a very good example because your computer is a client and the client asks the server, hey, I want to see the training video of Mr. Elias Gatsik. And the training server says, okay, let's get started. And he is giving the response to the client. You can see the network clients, the computers that request network resources or services and the network servers are computers that manage and provide network resources and services to the clients. Usually they have more processing power, memory and hard disk space than the, than the clients. Because you need more power in order to deliver this video training to all the users. The servers run a network operating system that can manage not only data but also users, group, security and application on the network. In the Windows world, I can give you a couple of examples, Windows 2008, Windows 2012 or Windows 2016. When we are talking about the Linux world, I can give you some examples like CentOS, Fedora, Debian or Red Hat Enterprise Edition. Advantages and disadvantages, as you can see, facilitate resource sharing, centrally administrate and control, facilitate system backup and improve our tolerance, and change security. Only administrator can have access to the server. They support more users. This is difficult to achieve with peer-to-peer -peer networks. But the disadvantages are the following. We have high cost for servers. We need some system administrator to make the configuration. And the servers introduce a single point of failure to the system. In case you have more than one server in a cluster and the first goes down, then the second one is going to take the traffic. But this is special case. In the general case, if the server goes down and this is the only one server, you have downtime. And as you can see later, downtime is very critical to the business. Peer-to-peer -peer networks. I'll give you one very good example of the peer-to-peer -peer network. I made a picture with my smartphone and I want to share this picture with a friend of mine who is sitting two meters away from me. So I'm turning on my Bluetooth and he is turning on his Bluetooth. Now we can pair the devices and I can share this picture. And we are creating peer-to-peer -peer network. If I turn off my Bluetooth or he turn off his Bluetooth, the network is gone. That's why there are no administrators responsible for the network. There is no ERT among the computers. All are equal. And the peer-to-peer -peer networks is also called Wargo. Advantages and disadvantages. Low cost, simple to configure, user has full accessibility of the computer, but you may have duplication in resources, difficult to uphold security policy, and difficult to handle uneven loading. Transmission media. Two main categories guided, wires, cables, and unguided. Wireless transmission, radio, microwave, infrared, sound or sonar. We will concentrate on the guided media here. Twisted pair cables, unshielded twisted pair UTP cables, shielded twisted pair uh, called STP cables. We have coaxial cables and fiber optic cables. I can show you example of UTP cable right now. If I disconnect the cable from this special lap in our studio, this, let me try. Well, it's not so easy. <laughs> this is a good example of UTP cable. 
Actually, this is UTP cable CAT 5E. What I mean by that? I'll move to the next slide. Categories of UTP cables. You can see on this diagram, we have six categories right now in this table of UTP cables. You need to memorize that the most used nowadays are category 5 or 5E or category 6. Category 1. The lowest quality only good for voice mainly found in very low buildings, not very compelling now. Category 2 is good for voice and low data rates up to 4 megabits per second for low speed talking ring networks. Category 3. At least 3 twisted per foot for up to 10 megabits per second common in phone networks in residential buildings. And category 4. Up to 16 megabits per second mainly for the talking rings. Category 5 or 5E supports up to 100 megabit per second, common for networks targeted for high speed data communication. And category 6, they support up to 1 gigabit per second. Packet switching. As you can see on this diagram, when the message is sent, actually the message is divided into packets. In our example, there are three, but there can be more. Packets are sent over the internet, but what you sh should know, packets are not arriving on the destination at the same time and in the same order. That's why the packets are ordered and then reassembled. And after that, the message is received. In this session, we're going to take a quick look on the OSI model. Because this is introductory training, I'm not going to explain you uh, more about the OSI model in details. You just need to memorize at this stage that the OSI model has several layers, physical layers, the cables are run on the physical layer, layer number one. The MAC addresses are operating on that link layer, layer number 2. The IP addresses are operating on layer 3, the network layer. We have also transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application layer. For now, just memorize the several layers of the OSI model. And I'm pretty sure in some other course later, you, you will understand what is the meaning and what is the idea behind all of them. TCP IP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. TCP software brings messages into packets, hand them off to the IP software for delivery and then orders and resembles the packets at their destination. IP stands for Internet Protocol. IP software deals with the routing of packets to the maze of interconnected networks to their final destination. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. It's alternative to TCP. The main difference is that TCP is highly reliable at the cost of decreased performance, while UDP is less reliable but generally faster. Well-known ports. Actually, the well-known ports are not so well-known because there are more than 1,000. But the port numbers in the range from 0 to 2023 are the well-known ports or system ports. They are used by system processes that provide widely used types of network services. I'll give you some examples. Port 21 TCP is used for FTP control. Port 22 TCP is used for SSH. Port 23 TCP is used for Telnet. Port 25 TCP is used for SMTP. Port 53 UDP and TCP is used for DNS. We're going to talk about DNS a little bit later. Port 
67 and 68 they are used in DCP. 48 is the most famous port, I think. <laughs> when you turn to reach some web page, we are using port 80 in the most of the cases, and in some cases, we are using port 443 for HTTPS. And the last one example is port 69, port called UDP, it's used for TFTP. Firewalls. What is a firewall? A firewall is a machine and is software that serves a special gateway to a network, protecting it from inappropriate access. You can see on this diagram we have a couple of computers and a firewall in front. And the firewall is protecting us from the bad guys in general. There are different types of firewall. I'm not going to dive in into details right now. Actually, I can show you one small size firewall. This one. Actually, the firewall can be a bigger one or a smaller one. This firewall is a smaller one. This is just an example how a firewall looks like. Actually, I can show you. Firewall can have one port and several LAN ports. And need to be found. Domain name system. The domain name system DNS is chiefly used to translate host names into numeric IP addresses. DNS is an example of a distributed database. If that server can resolve the host name, it does so. If not, that the server has another domain name server. I give you one very clear example how the DNS works. So, I want to call John, for example. That's why I'm searching in my phone book John's name, and when I press on the John's name, actually the phone is translating his name into his phone number, and I'm making the call. DNS is working exactly the same way. When you try to type in google.com in your web browser, actually the DNS is translating the domain name google.com into his IP address, the IP address of the server, let's say so. The very last section of the domain name is called its top level domain, TLD name. You can see this table here is an example of a phone book. What you should know, you can register for private use .com domain, .org domain, .net domain. But if you're not US national or state government agency, you will be not able to register .gov domain. .gov. Organizations based in countries other than the United States use a top-level domain that corresponds to their two-letter country codes. So, the country code TOD of Austria is .at. .via is for Brazil, .pg is for Bulgaria, .ca for Canada, .te for Germany, IE for India and US is for United States of America. Basic troubleshooting. We have three steps of the basic troubleshooting. Check the codes and the power, ping yourself and ping your router or the default gateway. The first thing you should always do is check to make sure everything is put in your computer, router, device, etc. Bear in mind, we all forget this step at some point, so do not feel too silly when it happens to you. Pink yourself is the step number two. You want to test that your machine is working properly. To do this, you want to pink yourself. You use the loopback address 127.0.0.1 to do this. Pinging the loopback address tests to make sure software on your computer is working properly. Typically, if something is not working at this stage, you may just need to restart your computer. And step number three in basic network troubleshooting is 
pink your router or the fault gateway. The next step would be to pink your router. You can find your router's IP address with ipconfig command if you are using Windows. Remember that ipconfig lists your router as a default gateway. It's very likely to be 192.168.1.1 or similar number. And in this section, I'm gonna show you how to create network diagrams. For this purpose, we need to visit the following web page, draw.io. So, when we open this web page, you have different options. You can save the diagrams to Google Drive, you can save diagrams to Dropbox, to OneDrive, or to your local device. In my case, I'm going to save the diagrams to my local device. Also, you can create a new diagram or open existing diagram. In my case, I'm going to choose create new diagram. Here, you can find different templates. You can create charts, flowcharts. You can create software design, for example. But we need something different. You have predefined network diagrams too. But in my case, I'm going to choose blank diagram. And now we can add different devices to the diagrams. First of all, we need some computer. Let's search for a computer. I'm going to choose this one, put it there. Now we need some kind of server. Let's search for servers. As you can see, you have different types of servers. Cache server, DHCP server, directory server, DNS server, or file server, for example. I'm going to choose this one and put it there. Now we need to find some router. Let's search for a router. I'm going to choose this ORS router for our network diagram. And the only thing which is missing is internet connection. We need ISP or internet connection. Let's search for internet icon. This cloud is very good icon for internet connection. So now we have all we need. I'm going to clone this PC and I'm going to make a label. This is our local area network. Let's make this bigger. Okay, that's good. So, this is our ISP and this is our router, server, PC1, and PC2. Now we need to connect all of them to the router. Let's connect also PC2. Now they're connected to the router. We're going to connect the server to the router. <laughs> it 
it is not so easy you, as you can see and now we have the computers and the server connected to the router and now we need to gain access to internet let's connect our router to our internet service provider okay now we have everything connected and this is our network diagram we can save this diagram to the walkup computer or export as image html pdf file in my case i'm going to save the diagram as xml file to the walkup drive so i can use this diagram later edit if some change is needed so draw.io is a very flexible online tool which will help you to create wonderful network diagrams you can switch the language of the tool to german french italian or bulgarian language for example also one very great feature is the offline mode this means if you don't have internet connection right now you can create your network diagram and save this diagram later when you have internet connectivity if we take a look on the tool you will see that you have a lot of options if we click on more shapes you will see that you have a lot of shapes you have four plans material design web icons signs also you have a lot of um, specific networking tools like cisco icons citrix icons google cloud platform icons you have also ibm icons network icons office icons vim icons and so on drag shapes from the left hand side and drop them into the diagram area you can style the shape using the style format panel on the right hand side to add an image drag and drop them from your file system search for shapes using the search field to replace the shape drag the new shape onto the existing shape if we take a deeper look on the tool you will see that you have a lot of shapes when we click on more shapes you will see a tons of shapes different and very interesting also please have in mind that this tool could work also offline as desktop application what does this mean you can install this tool as windows application for example if you want to know more about this tool please visit the official website so i hope you like this presentation how to create network diagrams see you in the next section thank you wi-fi now we're gonna talk with a few words about wireless technologies at the end of 2013 there were more mobile devices than people on the earth wi-fi speed have increased significantly with each release from 54 megabits per second in year 1999 up to more than 1 gigabit per second in year 2012. 71% of all mobile communications fall over Wi-Fi. 64% of the hotels now offer free Wi-Fi. And what is the idea behind all those statistics? The idea is that the mobile devices 
will become more and more in the future and it will be very important to have wireless troubleshooting skills. You just finished the last chapter of this training. So I hope you enjoyed this training. See you next time and bye bye.